and this is my week seven assignment for FTT 122. So let's go ahead and get right into it. All right, for part one of this video, we're gonna go ahead and start disassembling the dummy round that was sent to me by SDI. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I picked what looks to be a 223 round because that's probably the one that I'm most familiar with. And uh, we have the bullet puller here and the collet. So I'll just go ahead and start disassembling this. So let's go ahead and screw this. Uh, since I've already went ahead and pre-staged this collet, um, according to the instructions, the manual, you'll want to go ahead and select the one with the one groove uh, at the bottom for a 223. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and insert this into the, the round into the collet. Make sure it seats. And then we'll go ahead and drop this into the bullet puller here. And then we'll go ahead and attach the, um, the cap. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and strike this on this surface here uh, with some pretty sizable force to get the bullet and the uh, casing separated. Now if this was a live round with powder and a primer, uh, I would do things a little bit differently, but not too differently. So we'll go ahead and separate the bullet now. This table is wood, so I'll just go ahead and strike it on here. There we go. So now it's separated, and we have this little scale here, so I'll go ahead and pull this apart here, take the casing out. As you can see, there's this casing, no round in there. Now, if there was, if this was a live round, um, what I would do here is make sure that there's no powder. I would kind of shake it a little bit to get every some bit of powder out. And then I'd kind of place this off to the side. And then I just go ahead and pour everything in here. Now, since this is a dummy round and there's no live ammunition here at all, uh, we just have the projectile itself and the casing. Now if this was a live round, you can see here that there is no primer here. Now if there was a primer in this, um, there's a, a few things other gunsmiths might do. Um, there's other ways you can pop the primer out, especially if you have reloading equipment. Now according to the video in class, uh, it said that some gunsmiths will actually go ahead and put this round into a chamber and go ahead and uh, pop it off and that'll be the end of the primer. But for this video, there is no primer, so I don't have to worry about any of that. Okay, for part two of this video, we're supposed to find out the projectile's length and diameter and the dimensions for the casing itself. So we'll go ahead and break out our micrometer and we'll go ahead and start getting the measurements for that. So we'll go ahead and do the projectile first since it tends to be the easiest to do. There's only two measurements that we need. So we'll go ahead and back this micrometer as far out as I think we'll need, and then we'll go ahead and start measuring. All right, so we need to back up a little bit more. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but we're gonna back this out a little bit further. Now, I don't have a set of calipers, so this is what we're gonna have to use. So I have the projectile set right, right, right there. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but there we go. And so we're looking at at this number right here, you guys can't see that. So we're looking at seven and two thirteenths. So that is our projectile, golly. So there we go. So that's the projectile length. And so for this, we wanna go ahead and get our measurement on the most flat section here where the cannula is and there we go. So we'll just snug it up so it's not moving and we'll get our base measurements. So that is the projectile's diameter, 0.249. Okay, so for this next part, we're gonna go ahead and start measuring out the casing itself. So we'll start off at the back end where the rim is and it looks to be 0.375. Second measurement looks to be 0 0.001, 0 0.0001. So that should be 0.376 for the rim. Okay, so we got the rim. Now we're doing the base, and the base looks to be about 0.376. Okay, then we'll go ahead and come back and do the body. Body actually looks to be a little bit tapered. All right, so we're looking at 350th, 
plus 14.014. So 3064 and for the body. And we'll come over here to the shoulder. Really should invest in a good set of calipers. So we are looking at 0.325 plus 0 0.002, so really 0.327 of an inch, and then we'll do the neck, which is right here. Of course, my camera's overheating. All right, so the neck is gonna be 0 0.44 thousandths of an inch. So there we go. Now we'll move on to part three. Okay, so for this next part of the video, we're gonna go ahead and do a scale uh, drawing of the Casing and the projectile, so I will do my best to make this as nice as possible, but I make no promises. Alright, so this is my lovely drawing. I don't know if you can see it, but I'll show it real quick. Boom, there we go. Now, let's go ahead and do the... So we have the length of the projectile, 0.732. We have the diameter, which is 0.249. So there's that, that's the projectile. Then we have the, the neck, which was 0.244. We have the shoulder, which is right here which was 0.327 and the body which was right here and that was 0.364 and we had the base which was right here and that was 0.376 and then we have the rim which was also 0.376 so there we go. There's all the dimensions. And now we'll move on to part four. Okay, so we'll go ahead and uh, weigh the projectile. So let's get all this stuff out of the way. We'll grab our, our pan and our scale. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and place the, the pan on the, um, on the scale here. And we will make sure that this thing is zeroed, which I did before off camera. And here we are, right there. So we are completely zero. I don't know. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take the projectile and we'll go ahead and place it into the pan. And as you can see, this is where we're at. So using my general knowledge of this particular cartridge, I know, or I'm 99% positive, that this is a 55 grain. So we'll go ahead and start off at that. So we'll go ahead and move the ball over to the 50. Okay. And as you can see, it's still not all the way down, but it's a 55 grain. So we'll come over to this side and we'll start slowly moving this to the point where this will read 55 grain. So right now we're sitting at 55. And we'll wait for it to stop bouncing. One other thing to take into consideration if you're doing this in your house or your uh, apartment or whatever um, is making sure that you don't have a ceiling fan on because that ceiling fan pushes air down, which can put a little bit of pressure on that pan, throwing your, uh, throwing your scale off a bit. So I turn the fan off and as you can see here, we're reading 50. Five. So this is a 55 grain bullet. So I hope that explains part four in its entirety. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.